Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 875. Okay, if you want to download this workbook, 874 to 875, click on the link below the video. In this video, we're going to work off what we did in 873 and 874. 873, we saw how to look up and round, take this value, look through this column and find the nearest uh, value here and then return this. The thing about this is the increments were the same between all the numbers in the first lookup column. In 874, we looked up a value like this, but the increments were not the same. right? And in both videos, we saw how to create formulas. So in this one, we want to put it all together to do a bond maturity, bond rate, score lookup. So we're going to do a two-way lookup. Not in the traditional sense, when we're looking up a row header and a column header. We're actually going to take our maturity, bond, our bond maturity in years, look up this, and we need to round this. So this 1.15 is between these two. And the way a straight VLOOKUP approximate match or match with approximate match number one would look up, it would return this. But we want it to return the 1.25 because this number is closer to 1.25 than it is to 1. Once we establish this column from this lookup, we're going to have these rates. And then we need to look up these rates within here. And again, we need to round. But since the increments are not the same between the numbers as they were up here, we'll have to use a different method for uh, f looking this value up and finding the nearest value. And in both cases, we're doing uh, in traditional rounding where if we're exactly in between, we need to go up. All right, and here too. If we were exactly between these two, we'd need to move up. And we'll see examples of that in just a moment. All right, so in 873, uh, we used VLOOKUP and the MROUND function. So I'm going to do that here, equals VLOOKUP. Remember, we're looking this up value, value here. The increments are the same. So the lookup value, well, I can't just take straight this. In fact, let's take a look. If I were to take this and uh, comma 1, notice it returns 1, and that's not what we want. Now, we're not really going to use VLOOKUP here because I need to return the entire column. But that's just to illustrate how that uh, most uh, lookups work when you're doing approximate lookup. We're going to actually have to use index, index function because I want to look up the entire column. So I'm going to say equals index. The array, well, I have this whole table here without the any of the headers. Comma. Now we're going to do a two-way lookup here. But the trick is row number. Well, if we're looking up a column, we want all the rows. right? So we give index this uh, rectangle here, but we want all the rows. So you can either put 0 or leave it blank. So I'm leaving it blank. Now column number, now we just do our lookup and find the column 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. So I'm going to use match. The lookup value, we're going to use our M round, because M round will take this value and round proper rounding rules. If there's a tie, it moves up, comma, to a multiple or an, an amount, so 0.25. Right? Close parentheses on M round. That is our lookup value. We comma. And these values are sorted. Uh, we are, in essence, doing a, an exact lookup. But since they're sorted, we can do it this way. And sometimes uh, this would be a faster calculating formula than an exact lookup. All right, so match. It better give me 1, 2, F9. And sure enough, it does. Control Z. If you look at the M round on the inside here, it better give me uh, 1.25, so F9. Control Z. All right. Now let's see what this returns. If I hit Enter, it's going to give me a value error because we haven't. Uh, we're ret we are returning a more than one value now in Edit Mode. You can highlight it and hit the F9 key and see. Sure enough, oh look at that. It's returning the entire column, Control Z. Now I actually want, and we're going to have to use this thing a few times in our in our formula, in essence, because whatever we type 
for bond maturity, it's got to find the right uh, column. So I'm going to lock all these with the F4 key. My mouse is not working very well right here. And then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to enter it here, Control-Shift-Enter. Control-Shift-Enter, yeah, it returned an entire column. But when you Control-Shift-Enter, it just shows the first value. Now I want to create a defined name with that formula because I'm going to use it a few times in our bigger formula. So Control-F3. I already have one on, from the answer sheet, but I'm going to say new rate. And then down here, delete, Control-V. OK. So now we have our rate. Close. Let's test it. Equals rate. F9. Sure enough, it's got it. Now let's change this. Actually, let's test it this way. Equals <clears throat> 1 plus. And if you didn't know what the increment was, you could go like this. The bigger one minus the smaller one divided by 2. That'll give us the value exactly in between, because I want to test it. So. 1.125 if it's uh, exactly in between. And we could come over here and rate F9. Sure enough, it worked. All right, now, we don't need this here. It's That's our defined name. Now, once we have our formula element that looks up the column, now we need to look this value up in here. But we're going to have to not do a straight lookup or the lookup with approximate. We're going to have to compare that value to each one of these. Now, we did this in the last video here. In essence, I want to compare each one of these to, to this number to each one of these and find the difference. And then whichever difference is the smallest, that's the position I want to select. So let's first calculate the entire column of differences. I'm going to say, hey, that minus. Uh, rate, that's our defined name. If I highlight this and hit the F9 for this one particular value, there are the differences. Now, so we don't want uh, negative, so we'll just use the ABS function, absolute value. right? This is that little piece right there, F9. That is our column of differences that we'll calculate the min from and then look up the position of the min. Once we find the position of the min here, we'll go and get the score. So Control Z. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to use that a few times. How about the min? That's conceptually our lookup value, right? That one right there, that means the difference between this and this. Control Z. Now we need to look that up and find the position of it. So I'm going to say match. The lookup value is this min, comma, the lookup array, control V, comma, zero. We'll look up an exact match. Now, again, this has got lots of arrays all, all throughout that operation. Actually, that operation right there um, on this array means it's an array form. So we're going to have to use control shift. Enter just like we did for the the actual rate part was has a is returning a whole column also. I'm going to hit the F9 and see what this gives me three. So if I'm looking up 1.1 here, right? It's in between these two, and sure enough, it's jumping to the right one. So Control Z. That's our position. And what are we going to look up? We're looking up a score. So index, here's our values. Comma, that's the row number. Close parentheses, Control, Shift, Enter. Now, let's see if that is correct, right? Yeah, we come over here. Zoop, we, we are in between here. So yeah, that's returning the right value. But now, let's change this. I'm going to say equals. So I want to I want to find a value exactly between these two. So I'm going to say 1.92 plus the difference divided by two. All right, and I'm going to put, paste this as a value here. Now, right now, it should be going. It's in between there, so it should be jumping to there, and it's not. It's not delivering the score of four. 
Now, if we look at this, match is doing an exact match. And I'm actually going to take this and put it over into our spreadsheet and take a look. One, two, three, four, that's the, the number of rows in our column. Control V. Now I'm going to enter this. This returns an array of values, four values. So I'm going to Control Shift Enter and enter them. So right now we're doing exact match. An exact match when it runs into duplicates, and the duplicates are because we're finding the difference. And if the values in between there, the differences are exactly the same. Exact match takes the first one, not the second one. So that's why it's returning to three. Let's see what happens if we sort. If this was to be turned upside down, this nine would be on top. So let's sort it. Now when you're sorting, uh, you, you know, tables like this oftentimes bond material will be actually in that cell right there, or the rate will be in that cell. If we were to sort with data touching the edge of our field names and uh, records here, the sort would get all messed up, but I very carefully put the words off to the side. Now I'm going to sort any one of these, right click, sort largest to smallest. This down here you can see uh, the nines are on top so with exact match when we have our duplicates it's going to take the first one and since we have sorted the highest scores on top it will take the highest. Now you could also change this argument match type here to minus one and if you go look in help for match, it says when you have a table sorted like this, if you have a minus 1, then match returns the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. So here it hits that small, whoops, control shift enter. It hits that uh, smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. And in this case, it's equal to. And so either one of those will work sometimes, a minus 1. Uh, may calculate more quickly than exact match. So there, that is a wild one. Uh, we did rounding where the increment was the same, or rounded our lookup value. We returned an entire column. Then we looked up a rate and rounded our, to get our uh, rate here where the increments are were not the same, then we used uh, that whole column and looked up a rate there and found a score. Now, if that wasn't a w enough, let's copy this sheet over and see what would happen if we could adjust our formula if we couldn't sort it this way. Now, I'm going to click on the sheet and hold Control. While I'm holding Control, I'm going to click and drag up. Notice that plus up there, that plus. If I let go of Control, it's moving it. If I hold Control, it's copying it. And when I let go of the mouse, it copies, all right? Now, um, if you go to the post that uh, Marcelo Branco uh, made at the Excel message board, he has a great formula for dealing with the fact uh, what you should do if you can't sort it. I'm going to resort this. All right, so we see it uh, calculates the incorrect result. I'm going to actually take a slightly different route here. I'm going to sort inside of the formula. Now, the two things that are going to need to be sorted is uh, the column where we looked up the rates and the uh, column with the values we want to return. Now this one in, doesn't matter because that's just finding the min, so that can be in any order. But this one right here has to be sorted. So I'm going to use the large function, because right now they're sorted smallest to biggest. And I'm going to say array is that, comma. And there's a few ways we could give it the k. Now if the table is set, meaning it's 1 to 4, 1 to 12, or 1 to 50, you could just put array syntax, curly bracket, 1, 2, 3, 4, and curly bracket. The, the k is then saying, please give me the large values for second, third, and fourth. Since that's all of them, it'll just sort the table and give it uh, from biggest to smallest. Now, you could do this, make this dynamic, but th that would be another uh, video. You, you'd use row and indirect and a few other things like that. All right, I'm going to copy that right there. And I'm going to come over here large, control V. So all I did was inside the formula. Now if you highlight this, 
and hit F9. You could see on the spreadsheet there are 1, 2, 3, 4, but inside the formula there are 4, 3, 2, 1. Control Z, and then Control Shift Enter. So if you couldn't sort them, uh, you could do it that way. All right, uh, we'll see you next trip.